back that ass up and vote. Everything you just saw there is a perfect example of how bastardized, wrong, and backwards our modern day society is. A rich plutocrat who wants more power over you hiring a quote, real hip hop artist to convince you to give up your power to him. This, by the way, also just highlights how fake the music industry is and how rappers and all these celebritards would, will literally do anything for a buck. And honestly, I, I'm surprised that Mr. Steyer here didn't come out wearing a do-rag and a bottle of hot sauce in his hand saying, yo, 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 back the gluteus maximus buttocks to the voting booth. Yo. Anyway, our society's lost and, and totally gone. Doesn't really matter. Welcome back, beautiful, amazing human beings to the We Are Change News Show. And in this video, we will be talking about the migrant floodgates being open in Turkey as that NATO country also faces a clash with Russia. This all on the heels of a potential truce in Afghanistan that might potentially see the U.S. troops finally coming home, while of course the world is still on edge, and we will tell you why surrounding, of course, about all the latest information about the coronavirus. And before we get into all of that, sincerely thank you all of the amazing human beings who support us by buying some of our merchandise. We just got two completely new shirts in our store that will definitely uh, raise some eyebrows and <laughs> definitely start some interesting discussions out there with the general public. I really like this shirt. This shirt I'm gonna get a lot of flack from, but don't worry, we have a Donald Trump shirt coming soon as well. And hell, why not? We even have a coronavirus t-shirt that you can pick up on our Teespring stores with the link down below in the description. Thank you again, everyone, for at least even just clicking on the link. Now, outside of the headlines just being completely dominated with the coronavirus, as you can see, it's just nonstop, 24-7, breaking news, fear-mongering. Outside of that, we will address that at the end of this video. But before we get into that, one of the biggest stories is, of course, the latest events that are happening right now in Turkey, with of course what many people are describing the migrant floodgates being open and directly going towards Greece right now. By the way, this is something that I'm considering actually going to on the ground and reporting from. And uh, if you know anyone from Greece or anyone who could uh, join me on this potential trip, definitely let me know by contacting me on Twitter. But what's happening now is, is extremely significant and it's important to cover why this is happening in the first place. Now, a lot of this has to do with geopolitics, our specialty on this channel, with of course tensions growing strong between Turkey and of course Syria and Russia, who are at very strong odds against each other as tensions are mounting to a new high level, with Russia even going as far as to deploying their own warships next to Turkey, as just recently 33 Turkish soldiers were killed in an airstrike in the contested Syrian territory of Idlib, which Turkey occupied. This is a total of 54 Turkish soldiers dying this month. And again, in our previous report, we told you this will only escalate and it's escalating right now, as it's not only Russia sending more military hardware down there, it's also Turkey that's building up its military forces, as there could be a potential for a full-scale offensive attack between Turkey and the Syrians, who are of course are supported by Russia. Now in response to this latest incident, the Russian defense minister said that the Turkish troops that were hit and killed by this latest airstrike should have never been inside of Syrian territory. Now this is important because Turkey is still a NATO ally, even though relations between the United States and themselves haven't been the best lately, Turkey is still very headstrong in this situation and still has many goals of acquiring land in Syria and fighting the Kurds in that region. And as we've been telling you, Turkey wants the United States, wants NATO to intervene during this situation to face off against Russia, to face off against Syria, and to back their plans of attacking Syria. And uh, the United States and NATO are like, no, no, we're not really interested in standing behind you because of our destroyed relations recently. The relationship has definitely been hindered lately. And because of that, Turkey did 
what they were promising to do for a very long time, and that is release the floodgates of migrants to Europe. This has been a major playing card of the Turks, with them always threatening to play this card, and now they're finally playing it. And again, Russia is threatening Turkey with very bad consequences if they do go forward with their large military operation inside of Syria, which of course it looks like they won't do because the United States and NATO won't back them. And now we have another major significant migrant crisis 2.0 unfolding right now in Greece, which is of course the country closest to Turkey and where most of these refugees from all over the world will be heading to, since of course it is a part of the European Union and there are some political factions promising to take care of them and give them welfare if they do go there. And this is, this is a major operation. This is extremely significant. I'm surprised it's not getting more coverage than it is, but Turkish television and the Turkish government is organizing a massive caravan of migrants to Europe right now. There's buses and trains being organized in massing on the Greek border with already 18,000 migrants already crossing the border with hundreds of thousands expected to do the same from here. And of course, there's already clashes between the migrants and Greek forces as clashes have erupted, not just between uh, the migrants and the Greek police forces, but also between the Greek citizens and their own police forces that they're fighting right now because of austerity measures, because of pension cuts, and because of massive protests against the government that is building and constructing new migrant centers to house all of the new migrants. And as the government is spending an unknown amount of money on new migrant centers to feed, clothe, and take care of new arrivals from Turkey that have come from Africa and the Middle East, some of the citizenry that is getting screwed over by their government, that's getting their pensions cut, that's getting their retirement screwed over by the government, are absolutely angry, as of course the government says that they have no resources to help out the local population, but of course we'll be helping out the new arrivals into their country with a new policy by the Turkish government that even by their own representatives wants to see Europe burn. And again, as we've been kind of telling you and reminding you for a very long time, economic migrants and also uh, migrants from countries that the United States liberated and gave freedom and democracy by bombing the crap out of destabilizing and ruining any form of regular life of, they're used as a weapon for a larger divide and conquer government agenda so we all hate each other and fight each other. This is why in Europe, the government is spending taxpayer dollars on idiotic programs like this, promoting the quote, no, no space. Yes, this is this is an officially tax funded uh, program uh, that's being spread on TikTok. By the way, l incredible amounts of propaganda on TikTok. It's absolutely shocking to see the level of governments and propaganda outlets utilizing that tool, including also Big Pharma uh, to manipulate the minds of, of young kids who are on that app. But this is where people's tax dollars are going to. Promoting uh, no-no space since, of course, uh, assaults on women have gone up in correlation to everything um, in many European countries. But with one potential area in the Middle East on the brink of war, is there another area that could actually see some peace? Well, that's what a lot of people are hoping for, and that's something I'm actually hoping for as well, as the United States has actually signed the deal with the Taliban that could potentially see all of the US troops leaving that country within 14 months. Now this is all of course if the Taliban agrees and abides by the terms laid out by the United States in Afghanistan and this is perfect for election season and will be used as a major ploy for support for Donald Trump here. Now will this lead to the troops actually coming home? Well, uh, I hope so, but I have a feeling that the military industrial complex that gets a lot of money, that a lot of the intelligence agencies that profit of the heroin trade inside of Afghanistan that provides the world 90% of its heroin, I do believe that there will be some kind of sabotage efforts that will sadly not see this deal go through. And if it does, I will be very surprised because overall this is a good thing. There's, no, there's absolutely no reason we should be in Afghanistan. It's the most idiotic, stupidest thing that could 
ever happened to American foreign policy. Great for the deep state, great for really secretive, dark government agencies that profit off the drug trade and the human slave child trade that's happening in that country, but absolutely horrible for everyone else in the world. So, so again, if this goes through, this would be an amazing thing that would be accomplished in my opinion, because uh, 18 years of perpetual war with absolutely nothing gained from it um, is something that's absolutely backwards and idiotic and it debts our country, only enslaving us to the financial system that we're under already. Now, of course, let's discuss, you know, what everyone else is discussing everywhere with every headline, with every media organization dominating this topic. And that, of course, is the coronavirus, as, of course, it, it's spreading and continuing to have more of an economic impact. There are new cases in California, Oregon, Washington, and, of course, this will spread from here. Most people will be fine from it, but again, it's not what we should be worried about. The virus is not what we should be worried about. The human reaction is something that is worth looking into. Since, of course, economically, there are already severe effects with a lot of powerful people selling off their stocks with a lot of people who have their retirement in there just being utterly screwed over highlighting just one element of our criminal financial system that exists now. And again, when it comes to this specific new virus, there's two prevailing kind of thoughts. One, we're all gonna die, it's gonna be horrible. Buy your emergency food supplies right now, right here. And another, people being like, nothing's gonna happen, it's gonna be totally cool, it's gonna be fine. And again, uh, in my personal research and understanding of this, this will, of course, be somewhere in the middle, but it all depends on how information is spread. See, right now, um, Google, the Ministry of Truth, is promoting the mainstream media and providing a chokehold of information only for special interest to regurgitate and divulge whatever weaponized propaganda they have for you to profit off of you. Independent media that gives you the rational kind of point of view that tells you both sides of the stories, that tells you not to panic, that tells you to be smart and prepared with all of this, that you are only responsible for yourself and that a government will not likely be your best asset to entrust everything in. Yeah, yeah, you're not really getting that kind of conversation and dialogue, but you are getting Bill Gates calling this virus once in a century pathogen that will be, quote, more severe than the 1957 influenza. And then, of course, we have Donald Trump on the complete other side of this saying, this is just a new Democratic <laughs> hoax to make him look bad. And again, uh... I don't trust both of these individuals since, again, this is a new scenario, new situation still unfolding with many variables that sadly a lot of people are trying to profit off of. There's a number of put options, especially in the stock market, and it's absolutely incredible about the individuals who are making money hand over fist that, of course, you don't hear about in this. And again, the bigger truth that needs to be reiterated and, and, and told to everyone is that essentially when it comes to any emergency uh, response, 9-11, uh, Katrina, uh, governments are uh, horrible at it and usually cause more havoc and pain than would have happened if it wasn't for them. The Chinese government lied and censored a lot of important information about this virus and they let it get out of hand with, of course, prioritizing the arrest of doctors and journalists instead of actually having proper medical equipment, which they lack and they just make bootleg medical equipment that doesn't work. But again, whatever happens here, it, it, it's very unpredictable. As even Donald Trump, who, who just called it a democratic hoax, is even considering a travel ban from Italy very soon because of the spread of this virus. Again, most people will be fine, unless of course you are immune compromised or older. This is gonna be like a new flu that's gonna affect a lot of different people. You might have it, you might not even know you have it. This is a completely new situation and I can't stress this enough. What matters most is people not panicking, being prepared for everything, of course. Even if it wasn't for the coronavirus, I still have my own set of survivable, storable uh, food. I still have an adequate water supply. I still have rice and beans. I, I'm, I'm, I'm still prepared. Even before this coronavirus and, and and you should be too because life is unpredictable it could change in a matter of seconds and the only thing that you really have that will be always dependable is you yourself and your family no one else the media the government you think you think they're gonna actually care uh, come on now um that's that's again something that i see a lot of people not realizing and again 
uh, we have to keep reminding and hammering in there. So yeah, that's my particular take on it. What do you think? What other aspect of this should I talk about? Should I study? Should I research? Should I also go to Greece? That's something I'm actually considering. Uh, let me know all of that in the comment section below and continue the conversation on my Twitter, twitter.com forward slash Luke, we are changed. Again, I'm here because uh, literally, uh, there's some hats and t-shirts that some people want. That's that's one of the main reasons why I'm here. And uh, sincerely, thank you so much to all you amazing human beings and individuals that do purchase some of our merchandise and do allow us to continue our operation. I'm only here because of you, and this is why I love you guys. Thank you again so much for watching. Stay tuned for more here on wearechange.org.